Well, I want to I want to welcome everyone to today's workshop, Engaging Your Students with Yellow Dig Communities. I am Dan Cabrera, the Multimedia Coordinator, and, and I think you guys are, for the most part, uh, familiar with me. I, I think I recognize everyone's name on the, uh, on the attendees list. In today's workshop, what we'll be doing is I'll be explaining what Yellow Dig is and how it's used. Uh, I'll talk about the automated point system in Yellow Dig, which uh, makes it a little bit different than uh, your traditional discussion board assignments. I'll talk about uh, the role of an instructor in a Yellow Dig community, um, how Yellow Dig supports accessibility and a pedagogy of cultural com uh, competency, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, then we'll have an activity in the Yellow Dig community. Uh, we'll all have an opportunity to do that. You may ask, well, how can I do that? I'm not part of a class. Well, actually, I added all of you to a class, but we'll, we'll get to that. I don't want you to jump in too soon. Um, and also wanted to let you know that I am in the process of finishing up, it's still a little rough, finishing up a tutorial that demonstrates how to create a Yellow Dig community in Blackboard, which includes the setup and the configuration. These are two separate steps, um, and you really need to do both. Okay. So uh, let's just get started. Oh, good. We're all here. Hello, Julie, and welcome to our session. So nice to have you uh, with us. We just got started. Actually, I, I introduced myself, Dan Cabrera, and um, we'll be talking about Yellow Day. I'm sure you're aware of that if you registered for, for, the, uh, for the workshop. So I'm going to start off by talking about what exactly is Yellow Dig. OK. Well, Yellow Dig is a tool that encourages faculty and instructors to rethink the role of discussion, activities, and assessments, not being viewed as a type of formative assessment, but of connecting students to one another, becoming an active or becoming an, an engagement activity. It is, in fact, a learning activity for those folks who have taken uh, the Online Course Design Academy, we talked about the sort of sequencing where you have the uh, you have uh, the course level objectives and the module level objectives, and then the, you have course material and, and learning activities, and technology, and they all connect to the ultimate, uh, I guess, a variable which is assessment. Well, Yellow Dig, even though it is it is a discussion type tool, it is it shouldn't really be seen as a, a form of an assessment uh, or a formative assessment. It is, in fact, a learning activity. And in the description of the workshop, we talked about social cognition and what, what its relation is to Yellow Day. Well, perception, attention, memory, and action planning, these are processes that are important in social interactions. And a big part of what learning uh, of what Yellow Day is, is social interactions. And this is what, we're, this is what we call the social cognition. Thus, the, these discussion-based activities are an important element of learning. They help build a community and foster student engagement. Now, in addition, interactions between students promote critical thinking and a deeper understanding of the course material. Moreover, instructors can establish a presence to create a welcoming atmosphere that increases student success. And we're all, all about increasing success for our students. So. Uh, this is really about community building, it's about having students connect with the content, with the, with the instructor, and probably just as important with each other. So it's about community building. And too often, we use discussion as an assessment in the same way that we would use a quiz or a reflection, instead of trying to engender what, what we see as authentic discussions. So Yellow Dig forces, uh, forces you to, to do this by rewarding all community building uh, rather than rewarding students uh, saying a particular thing. So it encourages us to move assessments to another format, like a quiz or a reflection or a writing assignment of some sort, and lets discussion do what it does best, which is to build a community of inquiry. Now, when students are part of a community, their education becomes so much more than the class, uh, the textbook, the projects, and the grades. So Yellow Dig's stated purpose, in fact, is to spark real interactions that result in real communities. Now, in Yellow Dig, the expectation is that the real conversations take place that help students learn and to grow and connect uh, to the course, um, connect the course to the outside world around them. So for instance, 
I teach a course on ethical decision making for healthcare professionals. And then whenever we come across a situation like end of life issues, because that's one of the topics that we talk about, um, I'll, I'll ask the students about how you know if they've known anyone, maybe read a story, a news story, or maybe maybe someone, a, a close family friend, or maybe even a relative that ha was facing these types of issues. And so it, it connects them with what we're talking about for a particular week. So instructors encourage students to write on topics that are relevant to the course and that interest them. Now, anyone can share articles or illustrations or videos that interest their peers. And so it's not just a matter of a person agreeing with what somebody else says, but actually being more fruitful and uh, discussing and maybe even use, uh, using outside sources to justify whatever opinion they may have. So students are encouraged to comment frequently with posts in Yellowdig. So in a sense, this is a student's, a student's community to create. Although we start it, we get it started as the instructors. Uh, it's important to keep a light touch, a delicate, there's a delicate balancing act of, of being able to provide a certain level of flexibility for students, but also allowing them to, to be self-directed in this activity. Okay. So some of the attributes I would uh, ascribe to Yellowdig is that it's something that is ongoing. It goes on through the entire semester. Uh, it is collaborative uh, because everyone is involved in it and everyone has a stake in it, its success. It's engaging because people are in fact talking with each other. Um, it goes back and forth. And it fosters a sense of uh, students belonging and community building. One of the things about online courses is that there's always the risk of having something that happens uh, that keeps a student isolated from everyone else in the course. And that can happen, of course, in a face-to-face -face environment. But if you remove the, the, the actual visual cues of a classroom and an instructor standing in front of the classrooms and students in the seats right beside you. Um, uh, students may, especially if they're not techn technologically adept, may feel that they're left alone. Um, and so what you want to do is to be able to create that sense of belonging uh, to a community. So let's talk a little bit about how that happens in Yellowdig. So Yellowdig uses a community building technology in tandem with a dynamic point system to get vibrant learning communities established in everyone's course um, and programs by engaging students and automatically tracking their participation. Okay, so what, what it is is you're setting something up so that students can begin participating uh, and interacting with each other. And I, I think this, um, this image here sort of uh, speaks to that a, a little bit where we have content points, we have social points. And the content points really have to do with students who are creating posts or they're, they're responding to a, a post that the, you as the instructor uh, has created. In fact, you know, you can, you know, you can start with uh, a post such as uh, in the first week of the semester, please introduce yourselves to each other. Okay. And so you do that. Students create their post and then they look at other people's posting and they they make comments about that and of course obviously in that first week and what are they going to comment on hey you graduated from the same high school my brother did or you know it, it gets a lot more involved when you talk about things that are directly related to the um, uh, to the course itself the course content area so modifying student behavior and rewarding meaningful participation yellow day communities really become part of the course and the program experience for students and, and for you as the instructor as well so what we're talking about really is allowing Yellowdig, the Yellowdig platform, to do all the heavy lifting when it comes to grading and attendance. And so we don't necessarily grade everything our students uh, are, are looking at like that. That would be, become unwieldy um, because after a while, it, there is a lot of postings. Uh, however, students are mo more motivated to learn. Um, and, and I mentioned that for uh, uh, that uh, that yellow day is is designed for one purpose and that's to build communities for uh, education now yellow digs point system is what drives the pedagogy of the discussion so any comment or post by a student earns points this this promotes content creation so you want to you want to be able to respond to uh, not just what the instructor has asked you to do but to what other people are writing themselves other students are writing themselves but students are incentivized to create thoughtful content by the points that they potentially generate from replies and from reactions. 
So now this this is this assures a higher quality discussion as students strive to maximize their work and they find interesting things to write about. So while participating in uh, in uh, your Yellow Day community, students receive points for interacting with each other, each uh, not just posting something but responding. And I had mentioned about that real interaction. So depending on your community settings that uh, students can earn points for posting, for commenting, uh, for receiving comments on your post or receiving reactions to their to their post, and for receiving uh, accolades from the community uh, facilitators such as the instructors. The accolades, we'll get to that what an accolade is, but uh, I guess the, the, uh, the, the quick and dirty is that it's used the instructor who sees something who is so, someone's post who is so above and beyond and so outstanding and so helpful to further interactions that you give them an extra points uh, point value for for that now the yellow dig point system has some advantages uh, compared to traditional discussion forms now students get fast feedback to get clear tracking of progress toward the requirements we'll talk about what that requirement is if the social ways of earning points are turned on for your community, they can also get more points if they post and comment earlier in the week. Okay, so to earn those social points and, and possible accolades, um, they have to post and comments in, in the community for others to react to. So uh, in my own course, I have I have a discussion board, and I said, please post no later than their first post no later than Friday well that's a whole five days into into the session like that and so and I want people to be able to post because the second posting when they respond to other people's post um, really has to have something that is you know that they can they can respond to and if people haven't posted their first one by Friday then by Sunday it may be that there's very little to react to so what what Yellow Day is doing is encouraging people to post the very first part of the of the week, and so they, they get additional points for that. So they can also earn more points for posting articulate, thoughtful, and interesting content that sparks the, the real interactions with others that we, I talked about earlier. So by rewarding people for posting quality content that uh, that others actually want to pay attention to, otherwise, if, if it's not interesting, if it's not engaging, uh, you'll find that your your fellow students or their fellow students uh, are not responding and they're not commenting or they're not reacting to that. Um, but if in fact it is uh, what is posted is quality stuff, uh, Yellow Dig really drives this good conversation by encouraging people to be articulate and, and engaging and and offering something intriguing. Um, so there'll be good. Uh, you might find yourself you now if it's so good, you might find yourself as the instructor wanting to jump in as well, and you can do that as well, especially when it comes to assigning um, accolades. Now, if Yellow Dig is connected to your grade book in your learning management system, and of course we use Blackboard. Uh, Yellow Dig will send your grade there every couple of hours, okay. <laughs> which is it's just pretty cool. So we'll, we'll talk about that, and, and in fact, uh, well, the um, the tutorial that I that I'm still working on actually will show you how that happens, how you connect Yellow Dig with your course uh, grade book. Okay, so your current grade represents your pace toward reaching 100% participation target. So, and like I say, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So that target is simply the total number of points that you'll need in Yellow Dig at the end of the class. And so, say first day of class, uh, you start Yellow Dig, and then you you go all the way like 15 weeks later to the end of the course. And um, and so, what is the total number of, of possible points you can get? Well, you may say, well, you know. I have so many points for my for my course. Um, I'm going to give this, and this is really like it's more than participation points. It's actually substantially more than participation points, but it is participation. That's what you want to encourage your students. And so you may say, okay, I'm, I'm going to give my students 100 points for this out of however many. I've got 600 and some points in my course, so 100 points is not an insignificant amount. Uh, but every week they work toward building up toward that 100, 100 uh, points. Um, so um, you can earn, I guess the students can earn a certain number of points each week toward reaching their weekly max. So encouraging your students to make, to make sure that they're, they're contributing to their community early and often. Um, the rules are here are pretty, are actually pretty simple. If student gets up to 
it gets to grade up to 100% by the end of each week or they hit their weekly max, then they'll definitely reach 100% 100 uh, uh, participation target. And when we get into the session, I'll show you, uh, there's one There's one little uh, tab that says my participation, it's on the left hand side, um, and it'll tell you what is, uh, it'll tell the students what their current uh, participant rate is. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about understanding the role of an instructor in a community. Okay, so I mentioned accolades uh, previously, um, and accolades are simply awards for outstanding contributions. And now, when a student receives an accolade for a post or a comment, uh, they receive uh, a bonus points. It's uh, depending on the point, uh, the point settings, uh, and on the student's proximity to the periodic maximum. You know, so you know if they reach their maximum, can they go above their maximum? And actually, they can. Uh, and there's a way to do that. Now, while accolades can help drive engagement, and 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 I'm going to use this word gamify the community, uh, accolades must be used in a way that isn't given freely uh, or capriciously. So accolades must be used judiciously to positively impact your community. Um, so I'm going to give you some examples of how accolades should not be used in the following ways. You should not assign a grade to every single post or comment, okay? Um, or to indicate that a post or comment satisfied a minimal academic requirement or reward uses for vague, vaguely defined, that's good work. Okay, that, that, you know, it's, it's not to be used in that way. On the contrary, we want to use uh, uh, the accolade uh, in the following way. Well, it's to recognize and to reward truly outstanding contributions. So when everyone, when everyone gets a trophy, trophies lose their meaning. I know that it was kind of a thing uh, um, for, for, what was it, millennials, <laughs> when everyone got a um, participation award, and so it loses its value. So the same goes for accolades. As a general rule, uh, you should uh, give accolades no more than a to more than uh, no more than about 10% of the possible posts and comments. And I'll make that a distinction once we get into into uh, our yellow dig community. So to motivate behavior changes, accolades should be experienced as intermittent rewards. Um, they should be attainable, but relatively rare, so that's what makes them special. So to reward specific contributions to the community, accolades aren't just shorthand for good job or right on. Rather, accolades should reward contributions that help the community in a specific and diverse ways. And we're, we're talking about diversity, we're talking about inclusion as well. Now, some contributions illuminate a problem or a solution, and some contributions get others talking. And some contributions help others achieve insights or experience what we call the Eureka moments. So the best contributions are often the most Socratic. And I don't know if, you, if anyone has been to law school, but they use the Socratic method there. They help others see the light for themselves. Uh, our default accolades were, uh, or I should say, uh, the default accolades that are part of Yellowdig are written to target specific contributions to the Yellowdig community. Uh, but uh, you as the instructor can create or edit accolades as you see fit. Okay. So uh, the big why questions, why, why do we want to use accolades? Well, when you use them correctly, they are powerful motivational tools. They can incentivize high quality content. They can make learners feel that they're appreciated. Uh, they can set good examples for others to follow. So if you as a, a, a student sees a student sees that uh, a fellow student has done very well, and they look to see what was said, and they say, "Oh, you know what? I I had a, I had the same idea, but I just didn't write it down." Then the next time there is uh, there is an opportunity to make a comment to post, uh, they'll go and they'll do it. Uh, but just as grades cease to motivate when everyone gets an A, uh, so accolades cease to motivate when everyone gets accolades for every post they write. So we still want to make sure that they're rare. And just as Grading criteria should be clear to students. Accolade criteria should be clear to learners as well. So uh, where students are strongly encouraged uh, to reward learners, uh, well, we as the instructors are encouraged to reward learners uh, for promoting specific kinds of conversational goods and, uh, and reserve accolades for exemplary examples of that. 
Uh, okay, so uh, another role as the instructor is to uh, be the model for your learning community. Okay, so uh, you are in fact a member of the Yellow Dig community, so you want to be a model member. Uh, so uh, do what you want you know, your students to do. Okay, so you would demonstrate that, you would model that, you would create posts and comments, you would share interesting articles, you would take perhaps videos of yourself or participate in conversations as an equal member of this learning, uh, of the shared learning community. Uh, so don't tell your students exactly what to do, show them how to question, how to analyze, how to be open-minded. Uh, your students will look, uh, look to you for intermittent feedback and should give plenty, uh, uh, and, and you should give plenty of your accolades when they're deserved, reactions and encouraging comments to your students. Uh, so, but your students don't want to be, in, in, uh, uh, want you to insinuate yourself into every aspect of every conversation either because that might kill, might kill the flow, might kill the vibe in, in the community and so it's kind of sort of like the creepy neighbor uh, who has a tree house in the backyard who's looking over into the other yard. Uh, you don't want students to get that sense of, of, of being too overly monitored. Now the best Yellow Dig instructors really attend to their community with, as I mentioned earlier, with a lighter touch and they make their presence known without dominating the conversation. So uh, once again I want to emphasize that this is, this really shouldn't be an assessment activity, it should be a learning act or an assessment instrument, it should be a learning activity and that learning activity, the intent is to engage the students with the content, is to engage the students with each other discussing the content and connecting that content with their real world environment. So let's see, another another role is to introduce yourself. So an easy way to kickstart the Yellow Dig experience really is to create an introduction post where instructors tell their learners a few things about themselves using the introduce yourself topic. Now instructors can attach a photo or write a, uh, a paragraph or even record a video self-introduction uh, from the Yellow Dig platform. It's got that really nice, that feature that you can record a video. Now instructors can ask learners to do the same in addition to reacting and commenting on others, uh, on others introduction posts. And so what I've done already is to create a post in, the, in, our, Yellow, in, our, <laughs> in our Yellow Dig community that you're not uh, that you are not aware of yet, but you will actually be in very shortly. Um, now, why? Why should we do this? Well, this is this will expose new Yellow Dig uh, community members to topics as well as as three of the main functions of Yellow Dig, which are posting, commenting, and reacting. And this is in a relatively low stakes manner. It's just introducing yourself. Okay, so we'll all have that experience too in just a few minutes. And then finally, you want to think about gamifying your participation or the participation of your students. So if you think your community could use an extra jolt, um, uh, Yellow Dig recommends that you make up maybe some additional games to build and maintain excitement. So you could, for example, make, uh, make a deal with your learners. So to tell them that uh, if half of the class has more than a certain number of posts by the end of the week, that you'll waive an assignment due after an upcoming holiday or let them know that if uh, every student comments at least twice in a given week, you'll share an embarrassing picture of yourself from middle, sc <laughs> middle school. <laughs> Boy, that would be all of my pictures from middle school. Uh, then make uh, a big reveal in class, letting them uh, know whether the class will, uh, has met the challenges, okay? So something that actually grabs their attention. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna, uh, pause for a moment here. Are there any questions up to this point on what Yellow Dig is and how it can be used and what your role in as an instructor is? Any questions? Okay. Not seeing any, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to the next slide, which is on accessibility. I I think accessibility for any technology is is essential, um, and it, it automatically uh, puts that technology at a higher level, um, a higher level reputation if it does address accessibility. Um, according to Yellow Dig, they're, they say that they're deeply committed to ensuring that uh, accessibility is a make, big part of the platform for all of the learners. 
Um, and so I'd like to look at a, a few, wait, very briefly look at a few ways in which they attempt to do that. So motor dexterity accessibility. So the essential platform elements, uh, and when, which includes forms and, and tool tips and modal windows and toggles and, and filters are all navigable by the keyboard alone. So students who may have mobility issues may not need to have a mouse and, and all that, or maybe even to see that they, uh, it, they can actually navigate within the interface using the keyboard. Um, focused elements are highlighted throughout. Um, if uh, hover text is provided for icons and buttons with non-obvious functionality. Okay. So those are motor dexterity accessibility issues that are addressed. Visual accessibility, students can perform essential functions with screen readers and keyboard navigation alone. Uh, now, they don't guarantee compatibility with every browser or screen reader. Um, and they recommend to maximize visual accessibility. They, 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 they say use um, Safari uh, and VoiceOver if they're using a Mac, or Edge and Narrator if they're using a PC. Let's see. And their platform adapts to a 400% zoom. So it increases the size. So students who have a difficulty with, with their vision can actually increase the, the, the size of the screen. Auditory accessibility. Users can add alt text to videos recorded inside the platform to upload videos and to other uploaded videos. Now, audio also uh, does not play automatically when users scroll through their feeds. Let's see. And cognitive accessibility. So in-platform copy is simple and contains a limited jargon. So it's, it's, it's not going to be uh, overwhelming for students. Menus and submenus are reasonably uncluttered. And, um, and comment threading increases tractability of conversations. All right. Let's see. I'm going to get on to the next one, which is inclusiveness, which is super important uh, nowadays. Another aspect of learning with Yellow Day is its commitment to inclusiveness, cultural diversity, equity, and uh, as well as, and we just mentioned, accessibility. So modern learning experiences uh, should be inclusive for all people in an environment that, that drives engagement, that, that, that promotes retention, and also enhances just the sheer joy of learning. Um, I was at a Yellow Dig uh, office hours on Monday and I asked the question about how what are some ways in which inclusiveness can be uh, incorporated in with the yellow dig uh, community tool and so uh, one of the presenters says well you want to perhaps maybe allow students to really introduce themselves in a way that you can't do in a face-to-face -face, uh, class and I said well what, what do you mean I said well in a face-to-face -face class people may be may be intimidated especially if they're really shy um, and, and also, what's what they say may not even be remembered by their fellow students the very next class session. They'll, they they won't even remember a, a a name, let alone something that's attached a story attached to each person as they introduce themselves in a in a face to face. Since it's online, it's going to be there for for everyone to see and 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 refer to. Especially if you have a uh, group activity later on in the uh, in the semester, and they want to come back to see, well, who is so and so? Um, as a matter of fact, I have a group activity. I'm I'm, assign, I'm assigning my students uh, to groups tomorrow, and so they can always go back and see what was said about this one person or what they said about themselves. So uh, by doing this in in Yellow Day, it, it allows them to more ably express who they are. Um, now the instructors should be modeling what they're looking for and demonstrating. And so when we go into our Yellow Day community, which I keep referencing, you'll be able to see how I've done that. You want to show respect, tolerance, and support of all students. That's another example of, of modeling good behavior. Now, sometimes people can feel a little awkward about posting something about themselves. And so you actually can allow the option to post anonymously if people get, and that may be an issue occasionally. So you want to build social capital. You want to feel connected. You want to build a cooperative environment. And so you, know, you, you, you want to be able to promote a lot of these things. 
uh, you want to be able to, to make sure that students are encouraged to read each other's postings as well as commenting on, on other people's postings and reacting. Uh, this can be more helpful to one another. It stays supportive. Make sure the whole student has the same constructive feeling that you bring everyone into, into the community, that no one is isolated. And that's why I like this, this particular uh, picture of, of uh, people and they sort of have their uh, embrace with each other that they feel that they're included that they're not left out okay so let's talk a little bit about pedagogy and proven practices uh, what are those things that actually can can help you be more successful in uh, in your course so the first is to set up points um, now there is a point wizard that's uh, set of points in the Yellow community, and I'll, you know, in my recorded lecture or my recorded tutorial, you'll be able to see that. Um, if if uh, I, I would assume that everyone's not familiar with Yellow Dig, and if and so the first time you use Yellow Dig, um, I'm going to recommend that you stick with the default settings. Um, um, I think their defaults have been intentionally calibrated for to enhance uh, maximum student engagement. So you want to leave them as it is. Later on, as you become more adept at using Yellow Dig, you can modify those things. So later on, if you decide to alter the point settings, and so that's the value of, of each activity. So there's a certain number of points you get for, for posting and then a certain number of points for, for commenting. Um, uh, you can change those values. And you can keep in mind that changing values will in fact result in changing students' behaviors. You know, now, there are some ways to incentivize specific behavior patterns. So to promote content sharing, you, uh, you want to increase point, uh, points for posting. That's the, initial, that's the initial thing that you write down that, that you're adding to the community. And now to promote discussion or debate, you might, uh, you might want to increase points for comments. And so somebody reads, a student reads somebody else's posting and they comment on that. And the reason for that is because they might engage in some sort of debate with them or agreement. Uh, so you want to really promote that. So to promote quality, you want to increase points for receiving reactions and comments and accolades. So why? Why would you do that? Well, points motivate engagement. That's sort of the bottom line. They also gently encourage learners to engage in specific ways without enforcing overly strict rules about participation. Okay. You want to make grading low stakes and enable what we call grading uh, the grade pass back. Instructors commonly allocate about 10 to 20 percent of their final course grade to yellow dig participation. It's a small percentage, but still not insignificant. But regardless of of your uh, your allocation, it's really important that you allocate some part of your final course grade to yellow dig. To make the final grade calculations easier for you, um, there is there is a recommended integrating with your Yellowdig your learning management system course uh, that is available for for Yellowdig. Uh, it also enables the the uh, grade passback. That's sending information from Yellowdig to your course management systems. So why is that? Well, grades provide intrinsic motivation that students need to start participating in Yellowdig, which in turn gives way to intrinsic motivation. Uh, to keep coming back. So in other words, in extrinsic motivation is a necessary condition for intrinsic motivation and organic enga uh, engagement. Okay, let's see. I'm going to skip over that part right there. I want to mention the a point buffer. What is a point buffer? Well, Yellowdig recommends adding a generous periodic point buffer between 20 and 30 percent of the periodic uh, point target. So for instance, if the the uh, t point target for each week is a thousand is a thousand points and you say that's the most you can get. Well, uh, what if you get all the po all the points, score all the points that first week, but the next week uh, you miss you. You don't do anything. And so you should have if you if you're adding a thousand points a week if you if you uh, for, uh, by the end of the second week you should have two thousand points but if you got a thousand points the first week and zero points the next week well you're already a thousand points down now this is just a percentile of the total points that ultimately will, will make up their their final grade um, uh, for for the um, for yellow Day. Um but 
if in fact you allow a point buffer of anywhere from 20 to 30 percent so let, let, let's say you you have 35 percent buffer that means a person can can go above the 1000 point target per week and maybe score up to 350 points so now that 350 points can be used for the next week uh, to make up for for not working uh, uh, not doing anything in, the, in that second week okay so it's, it's simply a, a buffer for them and they can build up buffers by, by going above and beyond certainly they probably wouldn't be doing it every single week that's that would be a little bit more like, so they would be posting a lot they would be uh, commenting a lot they would hopefully encourage their fellow students to to comment about their own posts um, so it's important that uh, you, you keep that in mind Let's see. Now, this this last uh, this last recommendation is to require topics for posts and create them before the course starts. And so, what is a topic? A topic actually is tied to a specific, uh, well, whatever you're talking about in week one, whatever you're talking about in week two and week three. So you may have a topic that actually focuses on I don't know research questions or a topic that folk whatever your 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 particular discipline is um, uh, that you'll be talking about in a certain week have that as a topic and so you can create that topic and I'll show you how that's done actually that's that's something that you'll be able to see in the tutorial uh, but uh, when you tie the topic of in the conversations to whatever your whatever the course is I like, you know, that sort of guides the discussion for students to focus on so you aim to add topics you want to do this before the course starts uh, so that they can be selected for specific course content. Now, topics can work best when the title includes information about the content rather than only focusing on the course structure. So for example, instead of using something like Marketing 101 or Week 2 as a topic, you want to use perhaps something like um, Buyer Journey or Socially Conscious Advertising or something that's tied to whatever the topic is for the week. If you just say Marketing 101, that's generic to the whole course you have no idea what topic was that what the topic specifically identifies with something as broad as that okay let's see now what I want to do is I'm going to be sharing my screen uh, I've, been, I've been referring to this this course that <laughs> uh, that we will they're all, we're all a part of it right now so I'm going to stop sharing my PowerPoints and I'm going to now share my screen. Let's just see, share application screen. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, we're going to have a little bit infinite mirrors for just a second. All right, can everyone see my, uh, my fall 2021 screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So, uh, and this is what you'll see when you when we log into Blackboard. Okay. Uh, can I ask people to turn off their mics? There's a little bit of feedback. Just just mute your mics. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So right here, I, I have actually uh, enrolled everyone into an engaging students with Yellow Dig Communities course in the fall 2021 category. So I and I I don't want you to do anything. Just watch. <laughs> okay. So I'm clicking on that to get in the course. And and so what I've done is I've already created a Yellow Dig community, made it visible to all of you you folks right here. So if I click on the Yellow Dig community, it's, it's going to take me to to the Yellow Dig community. And so what I've done in advance is I've created a couple of different uh, posts. Um, this first post right here is how do you use Yellow Dig in your online course? And so in this particular example, I actually had a, a, a colleague of mine, uh, Jason Underwood. Uh, I added him to, the, to this um, to the course, and I asked him to respond to this question. This is an opportunity for Yellowdig users to describe how they've used uh, how they used it in their course. Uh, the use may differ if the user or instructor has multiple courses with different populations of students and levels of the course lower division upper division masters all right so I'm asking people to to do that now a person can either comment or post okay and that posting is it's it's related to this particular one right here and so as I look down here I actually posted to my own to my own post right here so introduce you oh no I, that's another one right here um, how I use how I use Yellow Day. so I just created I just 
click the create button and I started working on it and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I have a couple of opportunities to use yellow. I've had a couple more. The first time I used it was in a graduate level course, UNIV 595 graduate seminar on online teaching every week of the block. So I just discussed what it is I, that I was doing. And then I, I can see that Jason actually commented on mine because his his comment is associated with my posting. Very interesting, Dan. My first experience with Yoda was in an Etra 520 course I taught in the summer. Okay, so he's responding to that. Great. Now, what I also wanted to point out is, is that how did I get this particular thing, uh, this this a post at the top of the uh, Yellow Dead community, and I I pinned that to the very top. And I'll show you how, how that's done right here. So that every week when students come into the Yellow Dead community, whatever is at the top of the of the list, the, the top of this, because it, it'll start growing, it just grows and grows and grows every week, is to see, well, this week we're talking about how do I use Yellow Dead. All right, so now what I want to do is is I want to, um, uh, I want to, uh, let's see, here we go. Uh, I'm going to put this particular one that I've created right as a post. I want to pin that to the very top. So I'm going to I'm going to get into uh, edit, okay, because it already exists. And if I scroll down right here, what I want to do is pin to top. I'm going to click pin. So now this particular, uh, and it'll be important when you come into the into this uh, yellow Dead community, you'll be able to see it. I'm going to click. Pin to the top, and I'm going to click Update. Now, one of the things I sort of discovered is that it doesn't do it. Uh, uh, pin post automatic. So I'm going to click on the uh, Refresh button, and so as we come back into Yelladig, that post that I made that I want students, that I want you as as students in this course to participate in, should be at the top of the list. And there it is. Uh, please. It is now. It's replaced the other one, which, which had been, you know, how do you use how do you use uh, yellow in your courses? So this is simply an, an instruction on how to do that. Now you also notice that there is a there's a topic. That topic will always be in this this particular area. Introduce yourself. Okay. So when we come into the session, you'll be able to do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I would respond again to that. So I'm gonna click. So I look right here, and I could comment if I comment on that. Let me just see. Scroll down all the way. Yeah, this is just a. This is yeah. This is fine. If I if I comment on, I would just click here and it would be added to that one. If I create, which is tied to that, I'm going to say second intro. All right, and then right here I would have my my second. I am still Dan Cabrera. So you can see as I'm typing in this thing right here, this counts how many words uh, that I have. I think you're supposed to have a minimum of, of 40 words uh, to get full value. Okay. And, and so I, I just go on and on. And then I want to click on topics because I want to tie this to uh, what we're talking about. And that is introduce yourself. So I would click on introduce yourself. Okay. And then I would click on post. If I click on that, right now I have 685 based on my previous activities. What I want to do is, is I want to have a thousand points for this period session. Now this, our course, I mean our, the, the, this course right here is uh, only for two weeks. I set it up for two weeks right here. And so that would be a thousand points per week. So that would be a thousand this week, a thousand next week. In this period, this first week is not a thousand points. As I mentioned, I set it up for 350 uh, buffer points. So that would be 350 plus 1,000 is 1,350. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to leave still sharing my screen. Now what I want you to do, folks, is to is to uh, open up a second tab if you're using the browser. A browser you probably are, and and log into Blackboard, and then click on click on Fall 2021. Okay. So right now as we're talking, I'd like you to do that. Anyone have any questions about that that process? No questions? So we're going to click on the Illidig community link. That's the second item there. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to open up. And the first thing you should see is, if 
first thing is please introduce yourself to our course uh, Yellowdig community and let's just read the instructions and I, actually what I did right it was I, I included my uh, my introduction in this particular area okay so now what I also did was I have a second one right here which I add I guess this is why I have more <laughs> I have more posts because I, I did it a second time and I actually added a little bit more right here. It says I'm also, let's see, I've also been teaching online courses for the College of Health and Human Science for many years. And then a little bit more personal about myself. And this is something you might want to do for your, you know, for your students as well. Just maybe a hobby that you do, something you enjoy. Maybe it's a skill that nobody else knows. Maybe you can play uh, flamenco guitar or something like that. So for me, it was, uh, uh, I grew up in L.A. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> I've also been involved with martial arts uh, since the early 70s. I also enjoy growing green sprouts. That's very California. And fermenting sauerkraut, kimchi, jalapenos, milk, kefir, and yogurt. Not all together, obviously. <laughs> I currently live in Los Angeles. I mean, in DeKalb with my spouse. And I have two adult children, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I even have a picture of my... Uh, of two of my fermenting experiments. This one right here, rather than just having sauerkraut, uh, I I had uh, oranges and and lemons on one, and the other one I had apples. Um, it yielded an interesting flavor. It was something that that was uh, suggested, and I tried it. I have not gone back to it. <laughs> it was uh, it was a flavor I was not really used to. I had obviously ate all of it, but it was uh, it's an experience. All right. So as you guys are doing that, I want you to post, um, you know, by clicking on that create button, upper right hand corner. And um, let me just see here. That, I guess what I, I say one thing? Sure, so please. I'm, I'm using Firefox and I don't have that feature. So when I go there and I click, you know, on the yellow, the community, all right. it does is to the right, it shows me just the due date, your submissions and not, do I need to click launch? Mm. Oh, you know what? The very first time you get in like this, it's going to ask you, I think, for a username or a password. Did it? Did it ask anybody that? See, I'm not clicking on loading community. Hi there. Oh, it's asking for email password. Yes. So just just uh, put in your email address. Okay. No, it's asking me send email, enter password. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't think it really. It really matters about the password. I mean, uh, uh, well, just put in your your university password. You know, well, your notification was sent to your email. Okay, so, so is it like I have a different feature than others have because I'm using Firefox? No, uh, you know, because I recorded because I recorded this uh, uh, yesterday. I didn't go through that that particular process. I sort of ju just jumped right into it, and I'm sorry for that. Um, let's see. Click here. Let me okay. see. Otherwise, I won't be. Uh, okay. Um. So once you uh, once you click on the Yellowdig uh, link, it's going to ask you if the for the very first time it's going to ask you for uh, a password. So just put the password in your, your university signed password like that. You should be fine. Let me click again on Yellowdig community. See what happens. And launch. Hmm. Okay, now I think I, I can, uh, so engage a student with yellow the communities and, okay, I think I am where you are. <laughs> okay, Masi, great, great. Julie, Catherine, Tyler, how you guys doing? Emily? <laughs> I'm in, I'm in. Okay. Great, great, great. Tyler says he's in. Masi's in. Julie, Catherine, all good? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, folks. All right. So now uh, you'll see, please introduce that to our course community. So you can read what I say right here. You can put a comment. If you click on the comment button at the bottom of that of that uh, area that, that I'm in like this, it'll be attached to my uh, to my post, but I'd like you to actually click on the create button on the upper right hand corner. It's a blue button, uh, pretty easy to see. Um, you click on that and uh, you'll be able to start uh, adding some uh, your own, you know, and, and so, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be super, 
informative and all that stuff. Just say, you know, what department you're in, what your, your areas of research uh, are, if you have any uh, that are current or upcoming, even if you've just published uh, an article. And then uh, that may be something about yourself, some personal like, like hobbies uh, or interests, uh, photography or travel or whatever it happens to be. And so as you guys are doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to refresh mine so I can see what is happening. Of course, it, you guys may, it may take you a few minutes to do that. So as you're doing this, what I want to do is I want to remind you that there is, oh, Emily, thank you, Emily. Emily, let's see, marketing advisor. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily, and I've lost, I've had a lot of positions at NIU over the last 21 years. Me too. Well, a couple of positions, uh, uh, but I have uh, been the marketing advisor in the College of Business for the last, thank you so much, Emily. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So uh, I'm waiting for, for other people to post and that's fine too. So I just wanted to mention that uh, in that Blackboard course, you'll see there's Yellowed Community. Um, there is also a link to more information on how to use Yellowdig. Okay, that's that's right below there. Uh, there is a second Yellowdig link, and what I wanted, what I want you guys to do, and I'll, I'll give you another minute or so, and we'll come back to our uh, our collaborate session because I want, I really feel this is important to uh, to all of you. Um, is how to be you know uh, be specific uh, or, or target certain conversations for your students from week to week to week all right okay so i'm just gonna like i say another minute and then we'll come back here i also have some goodies for you um i have links to a playlist a uh, youtube playlist for your students who are using yellow to get them familiar with yellow dig um, okay uh, julie thank you julie I'm teaching a course for NIU currently, and I also have a, doc, a course in the Department of Curriculum and Instructions. Great! I have three grown children and three grand. Well, congratulations! You're a young grandma. <laughs> I retired from classroom, and now I have time to work on other things. Great! Thank you so much for sharing that. Let's see. Okay. And as you see, as as you add them, it gets sort of Add it to the top, and then and then eventually they get pushed down as more and more information is, is there. Okay, so at this point, if you if you uh, have not submitted your post, just click whatever you have, just click the the, the post so that it gets sent out. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is to exit the uh, exit the Yellowdig our Yellowdig community. I'm going to click the X sign that is on the upper left hand corner. And it's going to bring you back to you know, the course, engaging students. But now I want you to click on the and and for you, Masi, if, since you're using a different browser, you just go back to the browser you, you were using and and click on that tab that says uh, as you cursor over it, it'll say engaging students with yellow to communities. It's the it's the collaborate tab. Okay. So now. So I posted. Were you able to see my post? I did not, but I'll 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 check it. Uh, at the end uh, when we're all done here but I, I want to come back here and I want to I want to post I want to share some things with you let's see uh, how do you get your picture in uh, oh okay so uh, that assumes that you have a, a, a image a photograph already ready to go so if you click on that image uh, there's that little uh, uh, let me just see hold on I'm gonna share my screen again so I if you want to just come back to collaborate and, 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 and check out what I'm doing right here, I am now sharing my screen again. I'm going into Yellow Dig Community. And so I'm going to go into a, uh, going to go into a, as soon as it opens up. Let's see, Tyler Wood, let's see, where's Dan Cabrera? So here, here's one that I've been working on. So I, I can still edit this. I'm going to click on uh, this, the three dots, edit. And then as I look at this right here, I, ha I have an, an opportunity at an image. So right here, click image. And then I would just, I would just find, let's see. 
Uh, I think this might be it. Okay, so that's an image, and I'm going to click on update. So you, you saw how I did that. I was just, you know, uh, when I'm actually in uh, having the ability to to edit, I just click on whatever I want to upload, whether that's a file or video, if I have a video file, um, or actually recording right here, an image, if I want to record audio. Um, I don't think you're going to have the option to pin to the top. I think that's that's limited to the instructor. All right. Okay, so I have to leave. Okay, Emily, thank you so much for for being. I'm going to follow this up with a. Uh, I'm going to follow this up with an, an email um, with those links. The very important links if you if your students will be using this, uh, so that students will will become familiar with how to use Yellowdig. You won't be left uh, hanging. Uh, let me just see here, and uh, also will remind you that uh, the um, let me just see right here so when somebody uh, when somebody responds to you in yellow day you're gonna get an email sent to you um, and right here uh, this how to use yellow dig in your course that's that's when Jason Underwood uh, sent me you know he commented on mine and then uh, if uh, his actual posting actually was pushed out to me because I'm the instructor all right so I was able to get an inkling as to oh I got to go to yellow dig to see you know he's, he's posted there I want to go back and I want to comment on his post or I want to I want to uh, I want to react to his post okay all right so at this point let's see you know some people have had to leave uh, and we're past our past our time anyway any final questions Julie Masi Tyler uh, yes, sir. Um, Dan, I had a question because perhaps next week I would like to, uh, I, I mean, next semester I would like to adopt this platform because it, I think it's very interesting uh, for one of my courses. But there are lots of questions. As much as we did not get there, uh, you know, how to set up, you know, the points and all the different things, you know, not just the theory, but the practical aspect. Sure. So sure. will there be, uh, you know, any. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, you know, like um, follow up or because sure. I, you know the lot of and you don't want to place this in blackboard. Ask your student when you get the stock later on. You know that. Um, so the uh, the tutorial actually will show you how to add those points. We'll show you. It it should answer most of your, if not all of your questions about setting up a uh, a yellow dig community. Okay. Oh, I see. So wh when do you think that uh, that um, uh, tutorial would be available? I'm I'm hoping that it'll be available by tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Oh, good. So I mean, so very very soon. Okay, good. And in fact, I'll follow up and I'll send everyone an email when it's ready to go. Okay. I mean, I'll send you an email immediately after the uh, the workshop. Well, sometime today, and then and then I will uh, follow up with the next one. That says, hey, the the um, uh, the tutorial is ready to go. It's 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 in the course and ready to go. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank, thanks, Dan.